Hey everyone, so this is I'm a Dr. Nada, and this is my commission video to show you all how to make a subclass for your Baldur's Gate 3 class mod without any cuts. Thanks again to Chlorin35T for making this video possible. There's only so much time to make content for you all. And I want to be sure that I'm putting forward stuff that helps you all, even if the YouTube algorithm is a little less of a fan of these types of videos. So what I'm going to focus on in this video is showing you all step by step how to code a subclass into your class mod that you made through the prior video that I showed, which is in the video description. We're going to be going directly through the steps that I had in the more entertaining version of the video but I'm not gonna cut away so you'll be able to really see closely what I'm doing during each step. Naturally, I will skip step one because we already probably know what we're gonna be doing. Yeah, so let's go ahead and get started with step two, which is editing the class description file. So I'm in the folder for the mod that I'm gonna be working on, which I essentially just copied the prior commission video mod that I made for you all before. And now we're going to be going into the public folder. We're going to be going into the flowerborn folder, so the, the mod name from the class. And then we're going to be going to the class description folder and then opening that file. For purposes of this video, really all we need to do is just add a couple of sections that add the subclasses to this. And in order to have that code accessible, we can look at the class template file that I linked in the original video and will also be linked again in this video. So open up the class mod template and go to the same location. So public, example, class description, class description.lsx. And now all we need to do is just copy and paste this class description section here from the node right here to the slash node. So copy that and go into your mods file and then just paste it right below this node right here. And you'll know it's the right place because the spacing should be all correct. So that's really all you need to do to get the text in for the subclass. And now we can go ahead and start personalizing the subclass. So we have to make a couple of changes here. So for the class equipment line, we need to change that back to this example here, just so it doesn't crash when we select it because it can't find the equipment. And we need to make new handles. So to do that, we're gonna open up the handy modders multi-tool, click the handle button, click generate, click the bar, and then just paste it in and then make a new one for the display name as well. For our purposes, I'm not going to edit too much of the other stuff. For the name, we will be putting down the name for the subclass that I had in the more entertaining video, which will be the combustible lemon tree. And I'm, I just have no spaces because that's kind of a coding thing. For the parent GUID, here we need to have the progression table UUID up here from the main class and just paste that in. So this line right here, just copy that and paste it into the parent GUID. And for the progression table UUID, we have to make a new one for that. So we're going to go back to the Mother's Multi-Tool, untick handle, click generate, and then just paste that bad boy in. And we're going to do the same thing for the UUID field, where we need to make another unique UUID. So that's really all you have to do to add a single subclass. And if you want to add additional subclasses, you can just copy what you have here, add new lines and put it back in. And then you just have to edit those same lines that I pointed out. So great. So that's all that we have to do for the class description file. So step two is complete. Now for step three, we need to edit the progressions file. So for that file, if you remember from the main class, we don't want to close the class description file just yet because we need, to, we need to pull some of these UUIDs. So go back one directory to the public flowerborn folder, open up the progressions folder, and then open up the progressions.lsx file. So again, you can see only thing we have here is the main class file. But again, we need to have the template so we can add the subclasses. And we'll, again, we'll use that class template file to make this easy. So go back to your class template mod and go to the progressions folder and open up that progression.lsx file. And you just need to copy the stuff that's different that corresponds to subclasses. 
So we need this section right here that adds the subclasses directly into this main class, which will effectively link it. So copy that and make a new line right below the attribute and then just paste it in like that, like so. You can see that the indentation lines it up as you would want it. And then for the subclass progression, you wanna take this section down here and then just copy that and go back to over here and then just paste it in and use the indentation to make sure it's going into the right location. So have it kind of at the bottom down here. So now we wanna make it so we can have more than one subclass. So all you need to do to enable that is just copy this line right here, these three lines, and then paste them in. So this will correspond to each subclass and I'm just going to give it the name so we don't lose track and we, we give, it, give them the right UUIDs because it's very easy to mix these things up. This is very important. So for the GUID here, go back to your class description file. For each matching one, you want to take this UUID, so UUID and not the progression table UUID, and then go back into these files and just paste them in to replace them for the matching one, as you can see. So that's all we have to do there for the extension of the main class. Now we want to go ahead and edit the subclass information that is its own section in this area. So we again then we want to make uh, distinct nodes here for the subclasses. I'm going to give it the names just so we can keep track of things more easily. So all you have to do now is just edit a few of these fields in each of the subclasses. So for the name of the subclass, you want to put the case sensitive name and you can make sure that it matches your class description file. For the table UUID, you need to go back to the class description file find the matching subclass, and then go to this progression table UUID line, and then just copy that UUID and paste it into this line here. And then for the UUID, you're gonna be making another new UUID to paste it here. So very similar to what we did when we made just a class without any subclasses. And then you go ahead and repeat this for any additional subclasses. Great, so that's everything that we need to do in the progressions file. We don't need to keep the progressions file open anymore, but we do want to keep the class descriptions file open. So moving on to step four, that's going to involve producing a new localization file for our class. So it'll be able to show up on the character creation screen. So keep the file open. So go back to the very root directory, go into the localization folder, English. We can delete the local file. That probably doesn't make a difference. I just like to do that and then open up the XML file. So as you can see, we have the two lines for the main class information, but we want to add lines to include the handles for each of our subclasses. So these two lines right here will cover one of the subclasses, which would be the display name and the description, but we want to copy those two lines and then paste them in again just so we have the requisite lines for any additional subclasses, which is just one additional subclass in this case. So go back to the class description file, and then you wanna get these handle lines. So get the display name for your first subclass, which is the combustible lemon tree, copy the display name, put it between the quotations, and then paste the text that you want within between the two greater than or less than signs. So now do the same with the description, and then you just repeat this process process for however many subclasses that you have as I show. Great, so once you do that, just save the file and now we're gonna be making the actual localization file. So to do that, you just need to open lslib and produce the localization file. So open it up as you see here, go to your mod folder and then copy the path, which has the XML file into the input file path or just find it using the button Make sure you don't have the quotations in the end because that will screw it up. And then just paste the same thing into the output file path and replace the XML ending with a loca ending and click convert. And as you see, it worked. So we don't need lslib anymore so we can close that. So that's everything that we have to do with editing our new class and subclasses. So now what we want to do is produce our pack file from our mod. So go to the directory directly above what you had for your mod and then just drag that folder 
into the Baldur's Gate 3 Modder's multi-tool and it will produce the requisite zip file and then you can extract all and it'll place the pack file directly within the folder. So now to test it, all we have to do is just load our mod into the mod manager. We're going to import our mod. So go to the mod folder. So commission flowerborn subclass and select the pack file, drag it over, essentially save the order, export the order to the game and then launch the game. And then we'll see if it shows up as it should. And then select your class, which in this case will be flowerborn. And then we can go to the subclass option and you see that we can now select our subclasses so as you see it works very well and it gives us exactly what we want so thanks again for all my subscribers who have continued to help my channel along with the people who have supported my coffee account especially chlorin 35t who helped fund this video so thank you again and if you all have any questions or you have any issues at all with the content of this video don't hesitate to leave a comment and let me know i'm very happy to continue helping you all out in the next video i'll be going over how to find entries for existing things in the game like existing abilities and spells and showing how you can edit them. And that's a really useful video for starting to produce your own spells because it's going to be a lot easier to start doing that if you're working off something that already exists. But naturally, of course, I can make a video for things that just don't exist at all, which might be what you're looking for. So thanks again for watching. If you have any questions at all, let me know and Starship out.